We're back. We're back. And tonight we just have Brooke and Bud. No one to interview. <laughs> we got a reschedule. No big deal, though. We've no known him for years. We've known him for years, so. No big deal. Yeah. So yeah. we got this. So we got this tonight. We got a lot to talk about. Yeah. So we got a lot to random topics, but random topics exactly. More fun, fun topics. Some serious topics. It's all good. Talk about the Monroe House too. So how was that? It was. It was pretty cool. Um, but where's it? Where's it located? Hartford City. Hartford City. Where's that at? Um. Like out towards Mercy. So up north. Yeah. North of Mindy. Yeah. Okay. So in case somebody asks, let's. I can't believe you haven't been there. Like it's. No, I have not. No, I have not been there. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's. Yeah. It was on. um, Oh, what show was it? It was on a show. That one with Nick Groff. What was it called? Oh, he's been on a few of them. Paranormal Lockdown. With uh, him and Christina, Katrina, whatever her name is. Katrina. Okay. <laughs> I don't watch none of them. How, how many discussions have we had of this? <laughs> I mean, quite a few. I used to think she was cute back in the day, though. I mean, I still think she's pretty. Yeah. I'm not saying she isn't. Any, I I just like. Well, I'm talking about like back in the day. Though. She seems like a real sweet girl. Yeah, but she actually seems really nice. Well, because she came from um, what was that TV show? Paranormal State. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that, yeah. you know, I I've watched a few episodes of that, that show. <laughs> what so. was the What was the um, the main dude's name? Ryan something. Ryan Buell. Yeah, isn't that He's the guy a, you said wrote that book and he was a PO? Yeah, he wrote the. Yeah, I read his book and, <laughs> but I read his book before he even started all that con con artist bullshit. Yeah, you know he had been. I don't know. I felt like he was kind of all over the place. I don't know. Yeah, his yeah he, he took a he took a wrong turn, man. I mean, no bullshit yeah, for sure. Um, no, but it was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, they've been there. Um, supposedly there's like burial plots all over the property and it could be like native ground, I guess, um, is why there's so much activity. There's been a lot of, um, what, what did that, there's been a lot of history what of, like, was that? there and satanic worship and. All kinds of stuff there. Is that just urban legend, or is that no? Is it's it docu- actually it's actually been documented. Yeah. Okay. And, um, so, what was the house used to be, though? Like, what was it? Like, was well, it a? Like, it's just like a tri-level house. Like there was. There so was it was actually, just a regular, just a regular residential. It's a basically. regular house, but it's been around for a while. Okay. Um, and it's right across from the old Blackford County Jail. Which, if you have, oh, it, okay, awesome. okay. I've never been there either, but I know. So I know my what buddy you're talking Chris, about. So my buddy Chris and I actually just seen him. He lives out in Hartford City, and he actually drove by. He okay. Indy getting records and stuff. That's what he does for his business. Oh, okay. He stopped by, and he said that he had a public tour tonight or whatever that he had to go help out with. He helps out, um, Dan. Um, Dan also owns, so he owns the jail. He owns Randolph County Infirmary and the Jim Jones Boyhood Church. And oh. Uh, Hold on. Jesus. Ah, Jim Bug. Hang on. That was my phone. I apologize. Uh, I hope so. Oh my god, that gene bug almost flew up my nose. Well, that'd have been funny. No, no, maybe funny to watch me sneeze it right. out. But anyway, um, yeah, Dan owns. He owns the Blackford County Jail. He owns Randolph County Infirmary. The Jim um, Jones Childhood Church. 
yeah, boyhood church. Yeah. Um, which I just went there and honestly, it really wasn't like we a had, lot of people. Yeah. A lot of people don't know Jim Jones is from Indiana. Yeah. One of his first yeah. churches we started was in Indiana. It was off yeah. of Keystone, I think. I believe so. Yeah. I think it was Keystone. Um, cause it wasn't, that, was, too- that was another one serious wackadoodle. <laughs> yeah. But it wasn't, I think it was actually pretty close to Fountain Square. Was it really? I think so. Uh, like off Keystone. Um, cause my, or there was one close to Fountain Square or something. I don't know. I can't remember. Anyway, he owns that. He owns Randolph County. He owns Blackford County Jail, the old one. And then he also, oh, what's the other one he owns? Stone Mansion. Where's um, that at? in Winchester, Indiana. Oh, that's way up north. Yeah. So Okay. That place I, is- I've been is so, is Winchester up north? Yes. If I'm thinking Yes. Or am I thinking something else? I don't know. Hold on, let me check. I'm not a map, bud. <laughs> <laughs> well come on, Lewis and Clark, dig it up. I'm I'm telling you. <laughs> I don't even know. Yeah, he owns all these places. He owns um, this building in Hartford City. It's like right by the jail. It's like old antique store and stuff like that. Oh, okay. But it's called the Irving Building. And it used to be a brothel and stuff. And an old... And it turned into an old bank, and I was like, "Well, that's a twist." Uh, um, <laughs> another way to slightly. money, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> well, it's like kind of like the slippery noodle. The upstairs was a brothel. Yeah, um, I've actually been up there too. I can't find it. Oh, there it is. Um, it is out, yeah, it's north. It's out past Muncie in Winchester. So it's past Muncie. Mm-hmm. Okay. I feel like I've went to a lot of places north. I've been to a few, but not a lot. Good. Yeah, anyway, but yeah, he owns that too. But back to the Monroe House. I'm I've been to all those locations, but back to the Monroe House, yeah, it was it was pretty uh pretty active that night. So what all happened? I mean we were hearing I mean we were upstairs and we were hearing like distinct footsteps. And again, could have been just the wood creaking or whatever, you know, it's an older house. But it sounded plain as day as foot like footsteps to me. Um, we had some equipment go off and then I showed you that picture. Um, we were down in the basement and I was walking up the stairs and my back started to burn and I, nothing had touched my back. Like I wasn't leaning up on anything or nothing. And my back started to burn and Judy, um, just lifted up my shirt and was, <laughs> was like, okay. And she seen that scratch and then it started, she could visibly see it. Um, and the people that were in our group, cause they were looking at it cause it was right. just, weird. there was no, it was just a big welt. Like you could tell I got scratched, but it didn't have the line. Like there was no like, Hair or and you didn't and you didn't lean up it lean up on anything. Nope. Nobody was behind you or nobody touched me. Like I was no, I, I have no idea. I have no idea. So are I, you saying that was paranormal? I think that it was. Um, just your opinion. I mean, I'm just asking your opinion. I think that it was. Um, and, you know, I got pretty nervous after that. Because, I mean, because I wasn't there, so I can't call you, I can't call BS or, you know. Yeah, I mean. 
I've only been scratched one other time and it made me really nervous just as much as the last time because it's usually nothing good if something's going to physically scratch you. Right. Um, but they were even looking at it and it turned from one well and you could see another one forming right next to it. Um, so when they took the picture, you can only see the one, but there ended up being another one. Well, right after we left, um, I got back to my house. My buddy Josh dropped me back off at my house and um, I had him look at my back. I was like, look at my back and see if that's still there. And it was gone. Hmm. So... The only time, okay, because the only time I've ever seen, if I'm thinking correctly on this, uh, we were, it was an event. It wasn't like an actual ghost hunt or nothing like that. It was like a, where in the hell was that at? I want to, it was down south. It was south, south of Martinsville. I do know for a fact. Okay, anywho, it doesn't matter. But um, one of the gals that was with us, she said the same thing. She said she felt something kind of like like a burning effect on her neck, lifted her hair up, and there was a slight scratch. Again, I mean, the skeptic that I am, I mean, I kind of questioned certain things as well. She, I mean, she do that whenever she flipped her hair back or something, you know, do what I said, you were probably thinking, okay, well maybe she like, you know, grazed her skin when she flipped her hair back. But well, I don't know. Well, I mean, the thing about it is we were like, I was sitting on one part of the room and she was on the other side of the room. So I don't know what happened. That's the thing. I don't know. If she brushed up against anything, I don't know. I mean, that's the thing. I did. I couldn't. You know. I, I mean, that's what the questions that I had, though. I mean, were you sitting against anything? Did you no. reach? You know, because I asked the type of person. You know, because when people say the word investigate, you know, and you got a claim. Well, you got there's certain things you got to question, right? You know. So no, no, and that's fine, and that's you know, that's the first question, you know, I was asking myself, I was like, I don't even remember leaning against anything, bumping against anything, anyone. What part of your back was it on, though? Um, It was like mid, like middle of my back. Oh, it was right dead in the middle? Yeah. Oh, okay. Like low, I don't know. Like your lat muscles, like that wrap around like your side, like it was like your lats muscle. are right right below your shoulders. Yeah, so it was yeah, it was yeah. <laughs> it yeah, was your right lats there. would be in the yeah, your lats are in the middle of your back. Yeah, it was yeah, it was in the middle. Um, but yeah, you know, I mean, that was kind of enough for me. They've done a lot of updates on the house though. Um, that I was actually really um excited to see. And they even made a room that has air conditioning, everything. It has a movie. They got a Roku stick. They got two beds. Like, oh, so, yeah. I mean, Pam, Pam and Eddie. I tell you what, they are so. Um, they they know how to take care of their people for sure. Okay. Um, so are have, they, is Pam and Eddie who are, do they run the place or? Yeah, they're the owners. Um, so one oh, okay. year, so one year when I went, uh, I was like, "Yeah, it's you know, I want to go for my birthday," and um, I took Bo, and okay. Judy met me there, or met us there, and we left our house. We went there, and we get there, and um, Pam wasn't able to be there, but Eddie let us in, and he was like, "Me and Pam wanted to give you this. She picked it out herself, and it was an Oreo cake for my birthday." I was like, "That is so sweet." Oh God, I love Oreo cakes. Yeah, you know, I was like, "And you got a good one." It was like cookies and cream, and it had like Oreos on top. I'm not a sweet, and I'm not a sweet eater either, but I can I eat love the cookies and cream though, and Oreo. yeah, which I, I love Oreos though. Yeah, but yeah, I mean they they have like. A uh, coffee pot, I think, well, they have a Keurig now. And, you know, snacks and stuff like that in the kitchen. They have the fridge full of, like, water, Mountain Dew, coat, like, all kinds of stuff. 
I mean, they take care of you. For, That's awesome. That really like, is. I've always enjoyed going there, and it's not expensive either. I was, I was going to ask, how much is it? I think it was like 175 so it was like this time it was only like $35 a piece, and you could stay all night until like 10 o'clock the next morning. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, but they even, because they used to just have cots there, and they would keep them in a certain room. Now they have like a whole bunch of, they have haunted artifacts actually in there. Oh, uh, they have like tombstones and stuff like that. I'm like, that's kind of cool, really. Yeah, I mean, it's cool. Well, I don't like the ventriloquist dummy that they put in there. I am terrified of ventriloquist dolls. Terrified. Why? Of that is not normal. That like, how I, is it not normal? Oh, uh, it's just weird. Ventriloquist. Like why? So like, how is it no weird? One be able to do that. You're a demon. Like no one should be able. So you're saying you got a problem with ventriloquist? It, the oh. dolls are creepy too. Jeff Dunham, those, uh, those are cool dolls. Jeff but, Dunham's awesome though. Like, but I'm talking about like like dead the silent. actual old time, like the actual old time dead silent silence or whatever with the ventriloquist doll. Beware the voice no. jaw or whatever. Yeah, or, yeah. So those ventrilo like the old school ventriloquist dolls, I am terrified of those. Terrified of those. Hmm. I don't like that's them. a first. I've never heard anybody say that. I yeah, well, you know, <laughs> I'm pretty I'm pretty weird. <laughs> but wow. yeah, I I'm terrified of those. I've never heard of anybody saying that. Yeah, and they have one there and it looks like uh Slappy from Goosebumps. <laughs> I'm like, Slappy's going to come out of that case and come chasing after me, and I'm going to freak out, dude. Wow. <laughs> no, I've never heard of anybody saying they're scared of ventriloquist, ventriloquist dolls. The Monroe House is where I went, and I told you my very first time going, the, um, the door alarm flew off the door. I didn't see it fly off, but I heard it slide. That was the same place? Um, yeah, sorry. No, sorry. But yeah. So that, that was, yeah, the same place where you talked about the. Yep. Yep. Okay, so back to the, what. What all paranormal claims is th is there though? Like, I mean, what what do people, what is it that people like say claims about the house? Like, I mean, um, hold on, just a second. I'm sorry. I'm, okay, I'm back. Um, so you, you, ma mainly, the, the most I've heard is, you know, people getting, you know, pushed, scratched, um, seeing apparitions, shadows. Um, I don't know. I've heard of a bunch of claims, but, you know, I just take what I've experienced personally. Um, I do think it's definitely haunted. Um, what? But what is anybody saying? Who or what haunts the place or what? No, not really. I mean, um, I've heard maybe it could be like one of the step or one of the dads that lived there. Um, he was a drunk and he was very abusive to his family, and it's actually been reported and actually one of their children ended up being missing missing and i think that he might have had something to do with it so, so there's like a, oh, little, okay. a little true crime to it honestly too but like if you dig into it but they used to have a whole bunch of the history and documents and stuff like that like laid out on the table and i don't know what they did with them but that was cool to read whenever i'd go because they'd find more and more stuff um, Pam's sister was the one that was actually finding a lot of this stuff. You know, she was okay. the history of the house. So who thinks so who thinks it might be him haunting the place? Um 
You know what I'm saying? So where's well, like where's that I feel, come from? I think I think I think because a lot of people said that they they felt or they've captured like on EVP like a very angry male presence, um, just real irritable and just nasty. They've I mean some people have caught some pretty nasty stuff on their EVP. Um, last when we just went, we actually. I'm going to have to see if I can get the clip, if she can send it to me. But she caught on one of the girls that we were with, my friend Chris, his girlfriend. She got on her EVP recorder, a uh, little girl. And it sounds like she's saying, where's my mommy? And I was like, but I mean, you could hear it plain as day. I mean, you could hear like a couple of us talking, but we don't have a voice of a little girl. I mean, it was but just was like, any, But was there any like any data. humans in the background or what? No, we were inside the house. Because here's the thing with voice recorders. It was like, it was a lot like of people one, don't. It was like one o'clock at night, dude. There was nobody in the house. There wasn't anybody outside. The, I mean, now I know on EVP we were catching a lot of fireworks because it was July second. You know when we went. So. Because usually the worst part I have with voice recorders, and I mean this, now I'm talking about. Kind of like what I've dealt with throughout the years that I've, you know, you kind of learn and figure out is that those things can pick up a mouse farting. So sometimes, like when you got people off in the distance, or there's somebody talking at a distance and no one's realizing it, or I mean, maybe they realize it, but you don't, people don't pay attention to it. Is that, oh my God, I got this EVP, you got to hear it. But a lot of people don't document sometimes the other people talking. Or so. So sometimes that's why even I question even so whenever, and, so whenever like we whisper, this wasn't a whisper. This was someone, this was a child distinctly talking. It wasn't any of us. Um, you can hear Chris say something and then it's like quiet and then you hear her. And. But how many, pe how many people were but, there though? Um, there was five of us, and we were how all many how we many females? How many females? Same room. It was me, Judy, and Casey. And Casey wasn't talking, and neither was I. And Judy clearly does. I mean, none of us have the voice. I have a pretty deep voice for a girl. This was a little girl. It was definitely a little girl. Does anybody still have it? Yes, I'm sure Casey still has it. That's why I said I need I need to get it so you could hear. Yeah, me. I'd like to hear it. Yeah, I would. I would love for you to hear it. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure you're still yeah. going to argue about it, but it's still pretty. Cool. No, I mean it's just it's not that I argue about it. It's the fact that, like, when people say they have EVP, sometimes to me it's like people don't like again. Like I can't argue with it because I'm not there or I wasn't there. Right. But when people sometimes, oh my god, I got this EVP and it's class A. Well. Sometimes it's somebody wanting to be a chatty mean, cappy. What does that even mean, though? Like, why does everybody... I don't know. I feel like with certain evidence, I don't know. I've I've talked with some other investigators. Um, I'm, again, not going to mention names or anything, but I'll, like, tell them about my experience or something, and I'll show them, you know, like, a cool picture or something that I, that I captured. Right. Then, Oh yeah, well I have this, this, and that, and it's just like, dude, you, this isn't this isn't a right. contest, man. I really don't care. Like I, I'm just having a conversation with you. Like I feel, right. I, don't I yeah, I don't, I don't engage in those conversations. I never, I, I know. Like I, I, honestly, when they, I start refuse to do it. Yeah, honestly, when they start acting like that, I just kind of like start like fading away from the. That's why you know, making. like when people. Yeah, like when people have those conversations with me, like in the last podcast when we were when me and Sabrina was talking about what we used to do, and it's kind of like and I'll flat out tell people it's like, dude, I wasn't there, but you're showing me something. You're ask you're asking me to look at a photo, okay? But I'm giving you an opinion about me being a photographer. What's wrong with your photo? And they will argue and argue, and you're like, dude. Because it's not what they want to hear. Exactly, bingo. They want to be right. They and I'm not. And it's not. It's not my job to feed somebody's ego. Right. You know, it's not my job to give you an attaboy. Right. You know, it's not my job. 
you know, to pat you on the back and tell you, you know, oh, I mean, because that's what, that's kind of a problem, I think, even with social media. And, okay, well, I'll tell you, let me tell you a story here. And I'm not going to mention any names because I'm you. not, I'm just not going to do that because I'm not going to, well, I mean, it just, I'm not going to make it like I'm bashing the person and I'm not. It's somebody that used to be on TV, used to have a TV show, was on Facebook, posted a photo about on a ghost hunt they hosted about a shadow figure that they supposedly got in the photo. Okay, well, of course there's people that questioned it. There's people going, well, blah, blah, blah. And this person got, and I kind of felt like they was a little immature about it. Because, I mean, they were like, yeah, but I was blah, 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 I was there. And they were like, kind of like, I don't say, I don't think they were cursing people out, but they were kind of like the people that were commenting yeah. They were being they were being a tad immature about it, and then I saw a post the next day. That's the last damn time I'll ever post anything, and I'm like thinking, dude. Like number one, and here's the problem that I've got. Just because you used to be on a TV show, you know, now you're trying to use social media to feed your ego. You know, and I'm sorry, but anytime and it doesn't, and I'm not talking about just social media, but anytime. Somebody shows somebody something, or even if you post it on social media, number one, what you just done was just present peer review. Okay, yeah. so anybody is allowed to say what they want, whether you like it or not, good or bad. You know, any I mean, because even me, it's like I'm going to question something, but I'm not I'm not going to be a dick about it. I'm not going to be a total douchebag. And call someone a liar like you just told me right. about your scratch. You just told me about your scratch. Well, the the first thing I done well was you brushed up against anything. But that's kind of like what I do. You know, I'm not going to call you a liar. I'm not because no, I wasn't you've never. No, you've never called me that. Um, yeah, but I'm just saying. But I mean, anybody you just look like, at all the possibilities. Correct. You just look at all. You the know. So people need to kind of like get off the high horse a little bit and quit worrying about and if someone says something that disagrees with you, then fine, you know, don't worry about it. You know, I mean, just move on, move on with your life. I mean, so, but yeah, I mean, so that's kind of my point about the whole, when somebody presents something, you know, if somebody questions something, it's okay. Don't worry about it. Right, you know, because sometimes people ain't being a, being an ass about it. They're just they're just kind of just asking questions, you know. So, but right, I just but, I just don't like it when people try to act like they're better than everybody else. Exactly, you know? and I mean that you know, that is a problem. That is a problem with I think the paranormal community. I really do, right. and it's been like that for years, and it's just. Well, I mean, you know, I've got just not even just like that with the paranormal community. That's just how it is in the world. And life in general, sometimes. Yeah, that's just yeah. Yeah. Whose who's ego's bigger? <laughs> Bingo. Self, like I'm serious. People, people loves having a pissing contest. I swear. It's, yeah, I mean, it's no, that's no bullshit. I mean, it's like, which I mean, you know, it's like I said, whatever feeds your ego, fine. Who? And I mean, okay. Same thing here. It's like, you know, I used to work out with a guy and he'd look around the gym and if somebody could bench more than him, it would piss him off. Like it would like literally make him mad. And I'm like, you really pay attention. You're really paying attention to what other people's doing. I don't like, I can care less. I don't, I'm not there for other people. I'm not there you know, I'm there for my, you know, for me, you know, even with the whole, even like us doing this podcast. Right. I ain't doing it for other people. I'm doing it because we we were having fun doing it. Yeah. We enjoy it. You know, it. we enjoy it. So if you can't enjoy it, then guess what? Then you need to find something else to do. Right. You know, holy shit. <laughs> I, 
I almost didn't know if I was going to make it. I was taking that hot bubble tub and <laughs> you know, I was like, okay, we'll do it. But it wasn't, that I, it wasn't that I didn't want to. It was just like, I was so, I, it has been such a long weekend. So you were having a relaxing moment. I was having a very relaxing moment. It's okay. Right. Though. I'm, I'm, I'm glad we did. I'm glad we yeah. did ahead and did it that's my point we do this because we enjoy it i mean do do it because you enjoy it i mean do it because you know you're having fun doing it right you know i mean that's why i that's why i mentioned earlier about people's ego you know leave the ego out the door you know and that is and that is one thing about the paranormal community i think has been it has been a and i'm not saying everybody does it and i'm not saying it happened every no because it doesn't. I mean, because there's a lot of good people there that, you know, has fun with what they do. And I have met a lot of really... I've met some good people. Don't get me wrong. I have. Very sweet people. But, um, you know, it's like I said, it's a small percentage. It's a small percentage of people that do it. Yeah. You know, and that's what, you know, like a friend of mine was on Facebook the other day and pe- somebody was blowing him shit over something. And, and I just told him, also, just let it roll for back, man. You know, just let it go. I mean, who cares? It's like, I mean, right. people like that, I mean, does it really, you know, does it really matter? I mean, does it really, of course it don't. I mean, it's social media. Who cares? You know, big deal. Everybody's going to have an opinion on social media. Everybody's, <laughs> you know, everybody's perfect. You know, everybody's whatever. Yeah. You know. But no, I'm with you though. I mean, I've met a lot of good. Well, I mean, how did we meet? At Hannah House. But was it during the event, or was it which event? What it was it? Was it during? I'm pretty sure it was when it was just like a meet and greet, and then I started doing some volunteer work there. Yeah. Okay. And then I had met you again. Okay. Because this has been years ago and I kind of forgot. Yeah, and then you had been doing... This has been... Because we met a while... We met years ago. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we met a long... It was a long time ago. Well, to me, it was a long time, but... (laughs) But Yeah, I knew it was at the Hannah house, but I didn't know if it was... yesterday, but... (laughs) Yeah. Uh, yeah, like I didn't know if it was because I couldn't remember if it was Paranormal Day celebration or it was an event I did there. I've been friends with Judy since. No, I met her a long time ago. Two thousand fourteen. Okay. It was two thousand fifteen. Now I met her. It was, 2000, uh, it was like 2015 going into 2016. So I've known her for like eight Okay. Nine. So I've known you. I met. A little bit longer. Not, than her. I met I, her. Judy. I met you before I met uh, you. So. I met, I met her. It was a place out east. And it's had different names. So if that tells you anything. Mm. Yeah, somebody called it one location and somebody else wanted to call it something else. So. You don't remember the name of it? I've probably been there. You want to know the whole story behind the building? The house? Okay, sure. do you remember Okay, do you remember Black Moon Manor? Yeah, she told me about that place. Yeah, it ended up being Okay, a hang but on. She actually did. Okay, she hang on. An experience there. The guy that started Black Moon Manor which I can't even remember his damn name is a douchebag. But he's just one of them guys that it was a con, he was a con artist. And that's basically okay, what he is. He's a he's a con artist. And I can't remember his name to save my life. Um I'm hoping if somebody watches this podcast can tell me who he is. But I mean that's just my opinion. I thought he was a con artist and drop what? it down in the comments. Yeah, drop her down in the comments. Help the algorithm. <laughs> But he started Black Moon Manor, and this is what's funny. This is what how irony kicks in here. So he starts Black Moon Manor, and I never been there. I never, 
I know where I know where it used to be, or I don't even know if the place I is still. I heard it got. I think, I think it, it got, got demolished. I'm sure, it got demolished. Okay, so this guy starts Black Moon Manor, and uh, then somehow Ghost Adventures goes there, and so it shows Zach. <laughs> it's kind of funny, really. It shows Zach doing all this research at the library. And on uh, of all TV shows, of all TV shows, Zach actually called it out and said, "We were not finding nothing that this guy said it what it used to be." And actually, there's a friend of mine. It was actually his fam- family's old home. In real life, it was actually a friend of mine, which I haven't talked to him in a while. Um, really good guy, though. Really good dude. And, uh, but yeah, like everything that this guy said it was, it wasn't. And Zach called it out. So, okay. So then the owner, the guy that owned the house found out about what was going down and said, well, dude, you're out of here where I'm going to demolish the house. Cause it was never a haunted, like it, it just, the guy just wanted a money maker. Let's just say. And, uh, yeah. So then, years down, years down the road, um, he finds another old house out east. And that's where I met Judy at. Okay, so then he tried to start this place, and he, I think I can't remember what he called it. And uh, so he ends up getting thrown out of it, and then a couple of other guys starts it back up and they renamed it uh, um, they renamed it Revenant Acres and um, oh, it's in there. yeah it's in uh, it's Charlotte. almost in Cam- Cambridge City uh, if you go out east to where Cambridge City is at I think it's almost I know there, where it's, at, in there. <laughs> it's yeah Char- Charlottesville Char- something like that yeah but it's I believe it's right before you get to Cambridge City Okay, well, long story short, um, a couple of other guys started back up, but um, I don't know what happened to the place. I think the place is still there, but nobody's it's running not, it as a... You can't rent it out or anything anymore. Yeah. Unfortunately. But that's where I met Judy. That's kind of like the point. The point of my whole story, that's where I met Judy. But I had to, I had to mention the con artist that how that place got started as a haunted location or whatever. I can't, what the, Matt something, the guy with Matt. It's so small too. Like it's so, it's so tiny in there. Yeah, it is. Like it's a pretty cool place though. Yeah. I I mean, it's an old, to me, it was just an old house. I mean, I don't, I don't know if I didn't witness anything paranormal. I never, but I'm just giving you my opinion. Um, I didn't witness, I never witnessed anything. I never, if somebody else did, okay, that's fine, whatever. Um, yeah. But I'm just telling you my personal experience. I I never did. But like I said, if somebody else did, good for you. I mean, you know. <laughs> Neato, gang. <laughs> yeah. You know. But no, that's where I met Judy at. And that was a long, it was a long time ago. I mean, it was ages, ages ago. Yeah. Yeah, we went there. We've been there a few times. And um, last time we went, I think they closed it. I think. Yeah. Like two months after that. Something like that. Yeah. Like like I said, I don't know what went down. I don't. And I'm not going to say anything because I don't know what happened. So, I mean. Okay. You know, I if I don't know, I don't know. I think I heard um, the owners passed away. He so, was an old guy. He was a really old guy, too, though. Yeah. The guy that and, owned the house, he was a really old guy. Yeah, and I think that um, maybe the family just didn't want to... Right. I like, like I said, I really don't know. I'm not 100% for sure on that. But I know the guy that tried to start it back up, uh, he wanted... Like, he tried to do another Black Moon Manor is what he tried to do. 
you know, so and got busted and got busted doing it. He, you know, tried to bullshit a bunch of information about the house that wasn't true. You know, like, and I mean, that goes back to where, like, I don't care if people like, like, for example, me and you as a part of the Hannah mansion, you know, like, I don't bullshit stuff there, you know, but I mean, but the people that's lived there or whatever's had their experiences. Right. Okay. So that's kind of where the urban legends start. So it's almost like other locations, like, you know, if people have experiences or whatever, that's fine. But I always had a problem with people that starts that stuff up and will start a bullshit story just to make money. You know, I mean, I've had a problem with that. Well, I mean, I feel like every time we have tours, people are like, kind of like looking around. <laughs> yeah. Kids do it. Kids do it too, though. I mean, so it's funny. When the kids do it. I love it when the kids do it. I guess well, especially. The- you didn't see it. You didn't see it, but towards the end of the day, a girl, a young, there was a young couple, real young. I don't know. I don't know if you saw them or not. But oh, they were yeah. real young. You got the yeah. shit scared. <laughs> well, she asked, well, she asked, she goes, well, can I go back down to the basement and nobody else is in the house? I mean, we weren't doing any tours and I told her, I was yeah. like, we said, yeah, go ahead. You know, I mean, feel free to, feel free to walk around. I go, but if we got tours going, then, you know, kind of, so she comes back down to the basement, and then as she's coming, as she's coming back up, she said she said she saw a shadow person, and she kind of like did one of those. Oh man, she was like, I thought I yeah, saw a or man. something, oh, something in that manner. Yeah, and all of a sudden she goes <gasps> like that, and it, he, it, I'm it, not joking, it looked like he wanted to jump out of his clothes. He jumped. I bet that boy jumped twelve like a one foot off the ground, like it's almost like, you know, that moment you watch on Scooby-Doo where they kind of come up in the air and their legs are, (laughs) (laughs) it's almost like he wanted to do that. And, uh, and all of a sudden me and Pam, I was laughing. He, he had me laughing so hard. (laughs) And I mean, literally like he looks over at me, like, and I'm like, I said, dude, that just made my day. I go, I'm sorry, but, yeah, because she screams, then all of a sudden he screams, and I was like, <laughs> I was like, oh my god. Yeah, he kept on asking a whole bunch of questions about, like, the yeah. history and everything. And yeah. I was, like, I go, all I can tell you is my experiences. I can't really speak for anybody else. I That's kind of what I tell people, you know, like, yeah, I, I personally people, haven't. Get but... down to the basement, you know, the whole story about the slaves, I'm like, you know. Yeah. That is that is all legend. There is uh-huh. no documentation of that. Anything you know? Um, is it possible? Yeah. Right. Is it true? I don't know. You know, like, and then you know, people will say, "Oh, well, why don't you? Why? Why hasn't there been any digging to see?" And I was like, "You really well, want to just peace, man? Because you got to go. Because you got to go to court. You got to go to court to get a warrant." Yeah. Well, and do you do you have to get a warrant? You really? Do would, I mean, technically, it's your house. You'd be able to do what you want. You know, like if I own the house, yeah, but down in that basement, who the hell would? There, I wouldn't. If there was I wouldn't want to. There, like especially when the Ailers bought it, and I, if I were to have heard that story, I would. Okay, before we lay this concrete and everything all years on down the road, I want to see if there's anything down here. Right. But then, you know, as time goes on, it's like, you know, if there is bodies down there, their bones are so, I mean, they're pretty much nothing at this point. Right. It's pretty yeah. much like when you go, like, it's almost like probably like being at a Native American burial site. Yeah, I mean, it's just like, you know, don't disturb the peace, man. Just lay it to rest. Lay the legend to rest. Like, if it is true, let them be. It's almost like, kind of like the same thing about, remember, uh, you were probably really young at this time. But back a long time ago, Geraldo, no, I'm telling you, you would have been like probably a baby during this time. But Geraldo Rivera had had a show one night. It was a live episode. And I think it was around October. Because I was probably, shit, 12, 13, maybe. And, uh, so he has, 
<laughs> what was the name of it? Hang on. I don't. Okay, hang on. R- Geraldo. <laughs> this actually kind of cracks me up the more I think about it. Hang on. But he had a live. He had a live show one night that they were g- trying to get inside a vault, a safe that was owned by Al Capone. Okay, so the whole episode, the whole damn episode, they're digging in the wall. They're we're almost there. We believe we almost got to the safe. So they get to the safe and there ain't shit in it. <laughs> so it's like, ah, eh, that's a good been, one. I would have been so pissed. You didn't hear about it. You were you would you would have been real little at the time. But yeah, I was probably like twelve. I was probably like shit. I was probably twelve at the time, maybe. I was. It was in the eighties. Born in ninety. So hang on. Hold on, let me. I don't want to switch my screen, so I want to use my phone. <laughs> okay, hold on. I'll tell you exactly. Let me look it up. Uh, People keep on setting off fireworks still, man. I'm like, God, let it go. Oh. Roldo Rivera. Hang on, I can't spell the crap tonight. Rivera Al Al Capone episode. What well, I mean, 1980, 1986. Oh, yeah. They're not good. I'd have been 12. It wasn't even a thought. It point. was April. April 21st, 1986. The mystery of Al Capone's vaults is a two hour. It was two hours. Yeah. American television special that broadcasts syndication. Yeah. April 21st, 1986. Hosted by Geraldo Rivera. And that was before he got the TV show. But yeah, but yeah, back to the story though. It's like kind of the same thing, you know. It's like he was digging and digging, and yeah, it was like the whole two hours, and at the very end, uh, well, um, we didn't find nothing tonight. So it's like, thank you for wasting your time for two whole hours watching my dumb ass dig into this wall, and he got he got paid for doing absolutely nothing. Bingo. Yeah. Digging into I ain't a mad at him for it. I ain't mad I at him. Yeah, but I'll guarantee the whole country was, though. Oh, I bet they were. Yeah. Do you remember um, back in the 90s, there was... Because I used to watch MTV all the time in the 90s. Like, I was... you know, That's celebrity. when MTV was good, though. Oh, yeah. Celebrity Deathmatch, uh, Daria, like... No, uh, I'm talking about in the 90s, we had... There was, like, Headbangers Ball and... I remember that, though. You remember Headbangers Ball? Mm-hmm. Man, that was back in the day. Ricky Rackman. I remember that. Um, yeah, MTV was on all the time. MTV or VH1 was on all the time at my house. Um, but there was this show, and this was, like, later 90s. I was probably, mm-hmm. like, I think nine, nine okay. eight or nine. Um, but there was a show called MTV Fear. I do not remember that. They would go to these haunted destinations. Okay, you remember the lady from Poltergeist, the little, like, creepy... The little, the one... Lady. The one in the movie Craig T. Nelson called the Magical Munchkin? Yes. Okay, yeah, I remember. The one that said Um, Carol Ann? The one that... Yeah. Carol Ann! Yeah, okay, I remember. Yeah. (laughs) I don't know. Go to the light! Caroline! Yeah. Go to the light! So her voice is the... The most annoying in the world. Yeah, but it was like the narrator, and she'd be like, they said how, blah, 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 blah. She narrated it? Me and Mom would actually watch this show because it was cool, like... She narrated it? Huh? She narrated it? So... You know, like, in Ghost Adventures, when Zach's like, you know, we've heard of, you know, speculations of this, this, and this, or whatever, and it shows them, right. like, walking, and somebody's, like, talking. That's what she would do, but it'd be, like, all written out, and she would just, like, read off the oh, okay. Honestly, done without her voice, to be honest. Anyway. Right. 
Okay. I think they did it just like as a, you know, creep factor or whatever. Yeah, of course. So anyway, they would go to these haunted locations and they would have to, you know, whoever would complete, I don't know, so many, like, tasks or whatever, you know, they would win. And they would all have to do, like, random things. Like, they went to, like, Dracula's castle in Transylvania and, you know, all that stuff. And they would have to do certain things. I don't know. It was really cool. I, I never it. saw I never did nothing about it. They would have to do it by themselves. Like, they would have to go in these big-ass haunted locations by themselves, like, and <laughs> do shit if they wanted to win money. And some people backed out. Like, they would be like, nope. Can't was it. it celebrities or just normal average people? It was just people like me and you. Oh, okay. It was pretty cool. Well, I've but been divorced did, twice. I bet I can do it. When was it? I've been divorced twice. I bet I can do it without a problem. Nothing scares my ass anymore. Or 20. Um, let's see. Oh, I'm sorry. It was 2000 when it came out. So, yeah. Oh, that's pro okay. So that's probably why I'd never heard of it. There was only two se There was two seasons, um, only 16 episodes. It was on for a very short amount of time. Yeah, and the intro song was "Voodoo" by Godsmack. Oh. Yeah, it was. I didn't watch MTV by then. I I, I didn't really watch MTV. The show. No, I never heard of it. So, no, after they started, shows, yeah. The new Insidious movie is coming out. I really want to see it. I still got to watch the uh, last one. The how, last many, one how many of them is there? I think there's four. I think this is the fourth one, right? I don't, I've never saw one. I quit watching horror films by the time like 2000s hit. They haven't made a good horror film since the 80s. Uh, no. No. Okay. They have not made a good horror film since the 80s. Okay. Nope. After Okay, but what do you what do you consider horror film? I mean, now, I'm not talking about Saw, and I'm not talking about that's the gore. Halloween. That's not, that's not, I'm not scary. Though. And I'm not talking about, you know, no. Because those movies suck. Even like oh, Final Destination really movies, those those were horrible. I, I don't know. I thought I liked the first Final Destination. All the other ones, they were horrible. Yeah. But I'm also a big Devin Sawa fan, so I loved him and Idle Dude. Idle Hands was like one of my favorite comedy scary movies. Like, and it wasn't even scary; it was just it was hilarious and right. super cheesy. But I loved it, and I love cheesy scary movies like Killer Clowns of Outer Space. Um, oh, that one was messed up. Reanimator. I love Reanimator. No, I never <laughs> saw that one. Oh my god, it's so cheesy. So cheesy, but it's so good. Um, Body bags, that's another pretty cheesy one. Dead Alive is super cheesy, but uh, it's messed up. Now, what I consider like now, I and I those were back. Cause... Those were back in the eighties. Actually, I think some of them, uh, a couple of those, are in the Reanimator might have been in the seventies. Well, see, like I'm even a big Bruce Campbell fan, and it's like uh. like Army of Darkness. That's one of my favorite. I own every single. I own Evil Dead, Evil Dead Two, Army yeah. of Darkness. I own the new Evil Dead. Army of Darkness I, was amazing. I thought so. that they did a really good job remaking the Evil Dead because it was actually scary. You know what I mean? Like it was just right. super screwed. Like they did such a good job. Those were good films. Um, I mean, those were they those did a were really amazing. good job remaking it. Like I was actually really impressed. Of course, the original Evil Dead, you know, the whole series, like through Army of Darkness, it's right very cheesy and over the top, but it's still good. It's still a classic. Yeah, you know, of course it is. I have because I love Bruce Campbell. I just lo I yeah, love I love Bruce Dead. Campbell. Amazing actor. So my friend Sam, she actually 
um, she makes, and maybe I can try to get her on the podcast. She's usually pretty busy though, and our schedules sometimes right are iffy. But yeah. she she creates a lot of. Um, she started making like dioramas, like so, like sets from scary movies, and she collects a lot of like the figurines and stuff like that. She's been to a lot of like the. Um, like Days of the Dead and all that stuff. Um, she sold a lot of stuff online, but a lot of times she really just likes making stuff for people, like especially her close friends. So me, we need to go to Scarefest. I have so much shit that she's made me. So um, she just made me for my birthday from the movie Maniac. Have you ever mm-hmm. seen that where yep. Scalp suddenly puts them on the man? Uh-huh. She had a man. She had a mannequin head, and she made it look scalped. <laughs> oh! And she, and she put the maniac. So whenever Sweet. it's getting cold outside, I'm actually going to start doing the podcast inside. I just like to do it outside because it feels nice out right now. Right. But when I start doing it inside, pretty much like my wall of scary shit is going to yeah. be behind me. But well, see, when I lived when I lived in my other place, though, I. I had, which I got on my storage unit now, but Sarah had, um, cause well, you know, like with my, um, love Bela Lugosi, well, mm-hmm. she had a painting done for me of Bela Lugosi, like the Dracula oh, where cool. he was like stared. Yeah. And I used to have that as my background when I did the podcast. Cause why oh. not? Exactly. Yeah, no, I have the mannequin head, and then she also made me one of the body cocoons from Killer Clowns of Outer Space. That's um, a yeah, that's a good movie though. I actually she, like. I actually, oh, that's one of my favorite. That's one of my favorite clown movies. Um, but she made me that, and she also, speaking of Evil Dead, which is why I even brought her up, she made me um, the Necrocon, the book. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I was like. She's she's pretty awesome, and she'll make me, like, little random things. You know, she made me a skull vase with eyeballs coming out of the plants. It almost kind of right. looked like um, Little Shop of Horrors, <laughs> like the right. um, Venus flytrap or whatever, but it was eyeballs instead. Oh, okay. So, but, yeah, she's, she's made me a lot of stuff, and she's literally my twin. Like, she is... Right. Me and her are so crazy. <laughs> I love her so much. Like, and she's been, she said she's going to start watching our podcast. She said she watched the first episode the other night and she was like, You did. Well, good Lord, it's recorded. She can, you can watch it whenever you want. Yeah. Oh, is it, it's live? No, we're not live, but I'm just saying it's recorded. So you can go on YouTube and watch it whenever you want. Oh, yeah. I know. You know. Yeah. Yeah, she knows that's that. what I'm I saying. Yeah, okay. I told her. No, you yeah, don't gotta watch it live. She... Yeah, I'll sing about so doing got, it live. We but... gotta do a shout out for Sammy. Love you, yeah, Sammy. Yeah, big shout out. Right. We need to go to yeah, Scarefest. I would love for her to get on here and like show some of the stuff that she's made because right. she's. Yeah, we'll usually see, I... in the fall time, I'm over there and we're drinking beers and doing shooters out in her garage and watching well, she, has, she has a big movie screen out there. Okay. We'll just, we'll just sit out there and we'll watch a bunch of scary movies. I think the last there time we had a fire out there, it was last fall. We had a fire out there and oh, hell yeah. we, watched, we watched the original fog with Jamie Lee Curtis. Oh, that was a yeah, good movie. That was a good one. Yeah. That was actually when it was good. Right. So, I love Jamie Lee Curtis though, anyway. So, oh yeah, she's dude. She can give. She can play any role you give her. You know, a lot of people don't even know who her mom was, or or who her mom was. Yeah, she got killed in the shower in Psycho. Yeah, Yeah. a lot of people don't even know that though. Yeah, she actually dressed up a a couple years ago. She dressed up as her and did did a side by side. Yeah. Yes, and did a side. I thought that was really cool. I thought that was super cool. She looks nothing like her dad either, though. Do what? She looks a lot like her mom. Doesn't look like her dad. I don't even Tony know. Tony Curtis. Really? Tony Curtis. Yeah. I don't know that. You know the old, that. yeah. You know the old actor Tony Curtis. Mm-mm. Yeah, he did movies like back in the sixties and stuff like that. Yeah, that's her dad. Not a big yeah. fan. Like I didn't like. I'm not a big fan of his, but. 
Yeah. So we need to go on a ghost hunt, bud. You know what I got thinking about today, as a matter of fact, and I'm so... I know, like know, you said, you're not really doing it anymore or anything. No, no, no. Hang on. You about gave me an idea. We got a yes, Pete, or something. <laughs> I thought about me and you with Paranormal Vantage Point, like somehow, some way, me and you record, like me and you go to a location <coughs> and... Whether we, we can do it at the Hannah Mansion, it doesn't matter where we go. But like me and you record a video of doing a ghost hunt and then make, you know, like, inst- but doing it for, you know, Paranormal Vantage Point. Right. Like, you can, like, you know, you're the believer and I'm the skeptic. So there's actually a show on YouTube kind of like that, though. It's called, um, oh my gosh, and I used to watch them, but it was like Buzz Shane and. Uh, she yeah. and um, Ryan. The little, the little Asian guy and the tall white boy. Yes. Oh my god. <laughs> Hello, demons. <laughs> Those guys. They were so like it. And I, you know, I got really hooked on watching them because Shane is the biggest, he's about as big as a skeptic as I am, and he will point out the bullshit. And that's why I got hooked on that show because it wasn't all about entertainment value is mostly they go, they will go to the location together and if Shane calls bullshit like you know like when he pull out the spirit box and he'll call it like a piece of shit that you know <laughs> I can't remember where they went but supposedly like a president was there used to live there I can't remember the house and um, Ryan goes okay well we're going to go ahead and use the obelisk here and Shane yells out loud I can't like I can't remember the president. I and Shane goes, I want to go ahead and apologize in advance, sir, on us pulling out this big piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, I laugh so hard. I'm like, I love this guy. He's I'm so like, funny. He's so I was funny. like, I love, I love this guy. And I would comment on even on their YouTube videos. I'm like, I'm so glad you got a skeptic on here because it makes it, you know, it's almost like me and you doing the podcast. You know, I mean, because I feel both like put, you should have. Di- I mean, it's it's you know different opinions. I feel like you should yeah. have a little bit of diversity when you're doing something like that. that you know, bingo. I mean, you know, I I believe as well. So because sometimes I'm afraid if you take me on. You know, believers, but then to hear from a skeptic's point of view, and then you know, there's skeptics. That but I'm afraid I'm going to be the biggest buzzkill. Like you take me on a ghost hunt, and I'm going to be everybody's buzzkill. You know, I will be everybody who invited this asshole. You know, I mean, I'll be that guy. <laughs> well, like I take it back. Like I did an event. You still got equipment? Uh, I think in my storage unit. You think? No, I I still got the I got a DVR system. I think I only use like twice. It's brand new. Well, but yeah, like even like I don't know. I mean, I don't know what location you'd want to do. I mean, we could do the Hannah House, but you've never had an experience there. I don't know. Maybe no, this time you. But I've have- never. But hang on. But in my defense, when people's ask me if I've ever investigated it. And no, I have not. I have never, as long as I've been a part of the staff, done tours there, no, I've never done an investigation there. Yeah. Now, when other people's been there, I've kind of like hung out, you know, and like whatever. But no, I like as is, no, I've never, but I've never done one there. I have you, times. <laughs> me, you, and Kara should do it. All three, me, you, and Kara. Should do it. Has she been okay? Like, I haven't... I don't know. I haven't I, heard from her. Hmm. I need to send her a text or something. Is she doing If she's alive or something. Yeah. She's that not that be, far from me. She's not that far from me. Soaking up all the love with that little puppy. Well, I bet probably... Let me think. She's probably 10 minutes from here. Yeah, she don't live that far from me. 
Um, but yeah, I'll send her a text. But no, I'm saying, telling you. I was going to say, I'm about to if you don't. <laughs> Go ahead. But no, me, you, and her ought to do like a recorded yeah, on totally video. Like recorded on video for Paranormal Vantage Point. A ghost and do ghost hunts. Plus, do interviews as well. So, keep it in. Let, we need to get this channel interesting. So, let's do a ghost hunt. You're the believer, and I'm the asshole skeptic. But it's like I said, like when it comes to like Shane and Ryan, I don't want to step on, make it like I stole their idea, but or you know, kind of copy what they did. Because I mean, I'm telling you, I they got a great channel. If anybody doesn't know who I'm talking about, um. There, I think the channel's actually called Watchers, but their show is called um, Ghost Files or something like that. And um, there's two guys named Ryan and Shane. And um, yeah, one's a skeptic, the other one's a believer. And they're they're awesome. Their cha- their shows are awesome. I mean. Yeah, it really is. And I mean, I love watching them. It is very entertaining, very cool to watch because they keep it kind of funny. They keep it, you know, they keep it really cool. So I mean, it's nothing because I don't get into stuff like that. Because I mean, a lot of people out there, it's overacting, dramatic bullshit, and that that pisses me off more than anything. And it's like, but their show is just, it's funny. They're funny guys and. The real and I, I, you know, so yeah. If anybody out there doesn't know who I'm talking about, check their show out. It's really cool, you know. So I'm giving them, I'm giving those two guys a shout out right here. So <laughs> hit that so subscribe if, button. <laughs> yeah. So hit the subscri- hit my subscribe button too while you're at it. Hit or our ours, button. yeah. Click on yeah. Show button, Brooks some love. Click our damn subscribe button. Punch it if you got to. Yeah. Show us some it. love. Show us some love. Come on. We need to get more subscribers so we can start getting paid. <laughs> yeah, no shit. <laughs> so what are you doing with your $20 this week? Wow. We going to Sizzla. We going to Sizzla. <laughs> what are you doing with your $20? <laughs> Buying a bottle of Jack. <laughs> <laughs> PBR, I don't know. I don't really drink anymore, so yeah, I don't know. I could, yeah. I'll go out and get like some caffeinated, like stock up on caffeine or something. I drink on weekends. I, I don't yeah. drink through the week anymore. Um, I can't because of my medication. Like I'll have it. Like say if I go out to dinner somewhere, I'll have like a craft beer. You know, and that's Having about. A beer that's about, is different, though. Like I'm, ta- yeah. like I mean, I don't know. Like I, I don't even drink beer during the week. Like if I drink anything at all, it's usually right. on the weekends. But yeah, with my medication, I can't really drink any alcohol whatsoever. Yeah, like well, I said, I'll have a beer once in a while. Bud, but that's about it. But you also shouldn't be downing monsters and shit either. I don't down a lot of them. I like have like what one it's or two. We're at the Hannah house. You. Drink your coffee. Then those are coffees. Those aren't even any. I don't consider those energy drinks. Then you have a big ass monster. That's not that much, though. And sometimes you've mixed those coffee monsters in with your coffee. I'm like, dude, he wants. I will never drink one of those Starbucks drinks again. I was so wired during tours. those. Don't do those. Don't do shit for me, dude. Usually, I can drink stuff like that, but that day, oh my god. <laughs> Grab you by the boo didn't it? I was literally talking 200 miles an hour. I was like, this is wow. <laughs> when I first got, hold on, when I first got into the whole, like going to paranormal locations and stuff like that, my ex wife, well, we I don't, during it, no, we weren't even married then. I think we were just together. Which one? Oh, shut up. You act like I've been married like five times or something. Close. You're getting close to there. What are you getting close? I ain't getting married ever again. Just just a couple more times. <laughs> no. Okay, back to my story. Oh god. But uh 
Dana, yeah, we, yeah, we weren't married at the time, so but she drank so much caffeine, and I mean, she was doing like the five-hour energy shots, monsters, just to keep herself up. And that she was like slurring, her, she had so much caffeine in her system, she was slurring her words. Damn. Yeah, and I was like thinking. Oh my god! Like See, so, like with coffee, I can drink a yeah. whole pot of coffee. I can't and remember. And we sleep. went. We were somewhere, I think, in Ohio. As a matter of fact, we traveled. It was like a kind of like a group, like, look at that, like a group ghost hunt, right? And uh, one of the, you know, like one of the fun nights people have. But yeah, she drank so much caffeine that it was. Yeah, she was slurring her words and everything. It was like, oh, shit. I was like, yeah, holy shit. I don't know. Energy drinks, they just, they hit me different. Um, I don't know. Shit. Red, Red, Red Bull really doesn't do a whole lot to me. It Red Bull tastes like shit. Um, they have a new Juneberry one. I usually would get the peach. My friend April, I'll do a shout out to her too. Um, but yeah, she... Um, she introduced me to the peach one. Right. And I used to just have the sugar free ones. Um, yeah. And just like a small one. And I was like, man, I want something with some more flavor. And she was like, have you tried the peach ones? Right. And I was hooked. And that's the only one I get now. But then they came out with another one. It's called Juneberry. Ooh, it, it tastes good. It tastes like uh, Kool Aid. <laughs> tastes like the red Kool Aid. Hmm. Mm-hmm. You got the yeah, Oh my god. I did. What are you swatting at? June bug. Oh my god. Dude, these SOBs. Are huge. I haven't seen a June bug all year. Well, come out on my deck, and I'm telling you, it's. I haven't seen one all. I've barely Holy seen any lightning bugs. Wow, right dude. They're all over on. I don't really want to show my porch because I got the I got the blow up pool on the porch out of the yard, uh-huh. but I don't know if you can see, but there's June oh bugs, okay all, there's June bugs all over on that thing. Oh, gotcha. Okay, but they keep flying over here and hitting me in the face, and I'm not happy about it. Or yeah, leaving my hair. You'll live. But no, back to back to what we were talking about. We got off topic on energy drinks because you jump on my been ass about off it. Topic. I know, but isn't that fun though? That's usually how I am when I have conversations. Anyway, me too. Though, like people, get I'll start pissed. a conversation and I'll have this whole story. It can turn me and you could talk about a haunted location. Me and you could be talking about story. something paranormal right now, and I will lead it into, "Hey, did you watch that Reds game today?" No bullshit. I can actually do it without a problem without even thinking about it. Yeah. Oh, by the way, like, hey, did you catch the score on the Reds game today? I was watching it, and um, yeah, totally. I do it all the time. That's why I'm surprised I don't have a like. I have and a I podcast because I can't stay on topic. I don't, I don't. I don't watch Reds. Oh, I'm a diehard Reds fan. Oh, really? Yeah, I actually got to see Pete Rose play when I was a little kid. So, my mom's side of the family um, we're all Cubbies fans because my papa raised us as Cubbies fans so when he passed away his showing we were all decked out in Cubs gear like everybody that walked in like we all had Cubby shit on it was it was really cool he would have been so proud and he had I know a kid I knew a kid that, that was named after flowers. Ryan Sandberg really yeah, I knew. Yeah, I knew a kid so was named after Ryan Sandberg. To, so I went to Wrigley with. My, I've never been to Wrigley Field yet. Oh, it's nice. So I went when I was real young, and Sam, er, uh, Sammy Sosa was playing. And, oh God, that was back in the day. Um, yeah, and um, Harry Carey was still alive, and he sang "Take Me Out." God, I game. loved. I don't care what anybody says. That was the best. Baseball announcer in the world. I love it when Will Ferrell does his. <laughs> yes, Will Ferrell does the best. Hey, hair I hair. <laughs> By the way, it's the second inning, and I'm on my seventh Budweiser. 
He's like, if the moon were made out of barbecue spare ribs, would you eat it? And Jeff Goldblum's like, uh, he's like, it's a simple question, doctor. Just answer and we'll move on. Yeah. Yeah, the second unit, I'm on my seventh Budweiser already. Wash it down with a nice cold Budweiser. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Will Ferrell. A lot of people don't like him as a comedian, but he did. Oh, the best I love Harry him. Dude, yeah, he did the best Harry Carey. This is hilarious. And yeah. then Anchorman. And a lot of people don't like Anchorman because they're it not. Was a, like, it, it's dry humor. It's, it's very, a dry, very it's dry. dry humor. Yes. Yeah. It's very um, dragging. But I also yeah. like The Office, and I like Steve Carell, and he's Steve very Carell, happy. yeah. But he, the, the Office, I think, is hilarious. I mean, yeah. But there's a lot of people that hate it. I mean, they're just like, ugh, it's so boring, and it's not right. funny. And I'm just like, it's dry humor. Like, if you don't like dry humor, it's not going to be funny to well, you. Well, see, but. it's like me, though. I grew up watching Monty Python. Oh my and, god, I love Monty Python. And see, I grew up loving English humor, like English TV shows. Yeah. You know, like Ab Fab, um, Doctor Who. I'm a big Doctor Who fan. And, I've actually um, never seen that. You never watched Doctor Who? Holy shit. Slacking at life, I guess. I don't know. But yeah, like I grew up watching Monty Python movies and the TV show and. Like Monty Python's Flying Circus, I grew up watching that, you know, and and uh, yeah, so that's my kind of humor. Yeah, some people get it, some people don't, you know. So yeah, my dad watched like The Simpsons and shit like that, and um, that came out when I was in the seventh grade. He got me. He got me into the Three Stooges though when I was younger. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I mean. But I mean, my fondest memory memory of my dad when I was younger is watching Tales of the Crypt, and oh, that was a good show. <laughs> Very good show, but the I actual the original the original TV show it was actually really good. So Bo, for our first Christmas, he actually bought me the whole series, and I I almost cried because that was like one of my favorite like old time scary shows, you know, and um. I opened it and I was like, "Dude, this is really cool." Well, see, being and I started, but I started watching them and I was like, "My dad let me watch this." <laughs> yeah, because like, well, see, back the in the day, episodes, though, it's all titties see, in the first episode. Excuse my language. Yeah. See, ahead. like, well, back in the day, well, see, back in the day when I was young, when we this is before cable TV, we had Friday nights. We had, I believe, Tales of the Crypt. And then Friday night videos, and we had Sammy Terry, which was a local. I was too, I'm too young for Sammy Terry. Yeah, Sammy came. Yeah, Sammy. He stopped in like the eighties, uh, I think. That was basically yeah. He retired, which was his name was Bob Carter, and Bob yeah. also owned a music store on the north side. Um, yeah, Bob. Oh, that's right. He, he was from Indiana. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, he had yeah. um. Yeah, he it was a local channel four, WTTV, yeah, WTTV, channel four, and um, it was on I do believe Friday nights. Yeah, but it was a good show. God, I love watching it. I mean, because it's like the cheesiest <laughs> horror. He showed the cheesiest again. Shows in the- I love cheesy horror. Yeah, I love it, it was right. But yeah, I mean, watching Sammy Terry was amazing. I don't care what anybody says. Yeah, I'm. If you was young, if you was around my age and watched that show, you had a great childhood. Yeah. Unfortunately, I'm. I I missed that whole that whole bit, but it's okay though because I'm still younger than you. <laughs> you're a lot. You're a lot younger than I am. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you're Wait, a lot well, younger. You're a lot younger than I am. You're in your 40s. I'm damn near 50. Yeah, but you're still in your 40s. Yeah, I know. I'm still in my 40s, but the 40s are going to be over within probably six months. Eh, you'll be all right. Yeah, I know. I'll be okay. You're, you're taking care of yourself. I mean... That's right. I do. Yeah. Like, I don't smoke. I don't 
I don't drink alcohol hardly ever. Yeah. Um, I stay on a good diet. I'm in a gym six days a week. Yeah, I take good care of them for my I wish age. I had that motivation. <laughs> yeah, no <laughs> lie. I mean, like, that pizza looks good. <laughs> I do this, though, but hang on, but every Friday night, hold on, but I give myself, I give myself, I do this every Friday night, I have sushi, and I have my cheesecake. I have, and that's, that's a weird combination. My, no, not at the same time. Okay. I'm like, Ugh. Okay, but for one of my meals, I have sushi, then, okay, I but before, sushi. yeah, I do too, I'm, I love Japanese food. Mm-hmm. But okay, so but yeah, so at least once a week, uh, like I gotta have cheesecake as a treat, as that's like as my. But Veda actually, almost, just, yeah, she just had um, a fundraiser for her softball team. Um, well, during rec, and rec's over now. Mm-hmm. But at the beginning of it, she had a fundraiser. And it was a uh, cheesecake factory cheesecake. Oh God! And um, those are those are good too. Oh my gosh, they're so good. They're, they're so amazing. Good. They were like they were like this big. Yeah, and like, it's big. They were, like mini ones, and I'm like, yeah, dude, I can eat that in like, two days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, no, I, I yeah I eat, I still like there. I eat healthy. I'm in a gym six days a week. Yeah. You know. I go to, like, yeah, I've lost, I work. A, I've lost a few pounds. I've been wearing, um, like, those waist trainer belts or whatever. They, oh. But it has, like, the insulation in it so you sweat. And I've been wearing that oh. while I've been at work for, like, the first half of my day. Because um, I'm running around, you know. I'm pretty active at work. So, so it basically just helps you drop water weight. Yeah. Yeah. Which so, I, yeah, it just helps you, helps you drop water yeah. weight. Well, and I've been trying to cut back on. I'm on diuretics. I'm on diuretics, so I've been. So I shave off water weight pretty well. (laughs) Yeah, like sugars and salts and stuff like that. I've been trying to cut back on that a lot. Yeah, which I don't Um, need a lot of sugar at all, though. I mean, I don't need a lot of sugar, but I eat a lot of salt. I love salty stuff. Um, Right. So yeah, I need to cut back on that. Anyway, let's get back into talking about doing a hunt. Before it gets too late, we have to hop off here. So, do you want? Okay, to yeah. It? Let's talk. Do yeah, let's to... talk about that. So, it's like, um, let's take yeah, let's take the YouTube channel and somehow record. We'll find. We'll just all we got to do is just find a camera. No big deal. Um, find Judy a camera. Would definitely want to come. Well, yeah, that'd be cool. I don't care. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm down for that. But yeah, we need to find locations and record me and you doing a ghost hunt together. Okay. Instead of like, I mean, we'll still interview people. Don't get me wrong. Still do the podcast. But when people ask us about us being in the paranormal realm, kind of show people what we do. Right. Right. Because, like, when I say the words, I'm an investigator, I investigate the claims as a skeptic. So right. I'm on the other side of the fence. So, Right. But, yeah, we can do that. Yeah, I think, it, I think it'd be a lot of fun. I feel like a lot of people would watch it, too, for sure. Hell, yeah. So, Make it entertaining. Yeah. So I mean, see, yeah, we'll, we'll, get Kira, we'll even get Kara on board. Yeah, we can definitely... Um, get more into it you know like i'll research some places or whatever i'll throw out a couple of places to you and you can look them up and see if you'd be interested in we'll even go out of them. state too though i mean we don't have to stay in indiana i like travel I, mean, I like to travel so we can but we'd also have to be back like that next day because yeah. i have school and work in beta well i got i gotta work sunday nights i go into work yeah. sunday night so okay so yeah, that's technically that's technically my Monday. So okay, yeah, um, we'll definitely look into that. That'd be a lot of fun. I'd totally be down to do that. But I also 
have been wanting to take you on an investigation for a while just because you are a skeptic and I want something to happen to you. <laughs> you know, she's been wanting to come on the podcast, but I got a friend in Illinois her named Shanna. Uh-huh. And I'm gonna, she'll probably watch. Actually, she watched the last, last, she watched the last podcast, and she's a really cool chick. I mean, I've known her. We've known each other for a good long while. And she says it all the damn time about how she's going to make me a believer. <laughs> and then she made a comment about it. She goes, I don't care if I have to get you in a headlock. And I'm like, well, the headlock will probably be... <laughs> I would I would pay money to see that. I told her the headlock will probably have to come into play because I don't see nothing making me a believer. <laughs> no. Never say never. Never yeah, say no, never. I mean don't get me but don't get me wrong. There I have witnessed before somebody calls me a liar. I have been places where I've had things happen or seen things that kind of questioned it like you know like what the hell could that could have been you know or i mean don't get me wrong i mean i've had i've seen things where that could possibly par be paranormal but i'd never written it off as paranormal you know right because i mean it takes it just, it does take a lot to write it off as that and i don't think I don't think there's ever been any kind of evidence whatsoever that I would say ghosts are real, you know? So, yeah. but that's just me. I mean, you know what I just remembered? What? What we were talking about before. And I was like, we need to talk about this on the podcast. You've named a hundred things that you said we need to talk about. <laughs> The lady on the airplane. Oh! Yeah! Oh, shit. We have to talk about that because i seen that. Before we get off here, before we end the podcast, let's talk about the Karen. Okay, because... Not Karen. I, That's not her well, name. <laughs> no, she was a Karen. She was being a Karen. She was now, freaked out, for sure. Oh, okay. Hold on. When I was reading the story, again, it was TMZ, so take it take it however you want. I see. Which, I didn't see it on TMZ. I saw it on TMZ. That's where. But I saw it on I Facebook. Somebody first. posted on Facebook, and a bunch of people were like, "Oh, she was drunk, or this and that." No, or she. she I watched the video. Or somebody stole okay. her AirPods, or something. Go on. Yes, but hang on. Okay. I saw it on YouTube. Then I looked it up on YouTube because someone recorded her and she wasn't drunk she was it didn't look like she was high nothing i mean she just she seemed was, like she was really freaked out over something but in case nobody else knows this the comedian carrot top was on the plane yeah you know the comedian carrot top i know who carrot top is she's okay not well i'm just saying he was on the plane. I didn't know that. What does that have yes. to do with the story? I'm getting there. Okay, well. <laughs> okay, he was on this the plane. Exciting. <laughs> and Carrot Top said that she was blown. If I'm thinking, if I read this, like I said, I read it a while back. Or a few hours ago, so I don't know it word for word. But. He said something, I believe, in the manner like she lost her earbuds or something, and she was just flipping out. She was flipping out over something, is what he said. So she stands up. Supposedly she's flipping out over earbuds. Then she stands up and said she saw somebody. She saw a shapeshifter. In the case, nobody knows what a shapeshifter is. In true Native American folklore um, a shapeshifter is someone that takes the shape of a certain animal it could be an eagle it could be a wolf whatever and it's mostly what Navajo like a Navajo folklore yeah yeah I think, I think so 
Yeah, I believe it's mostly Navajo, Navajo folk. And I want to say, if I'm thinking correctly, I'll have to research this later, but um, if I got time tonight. And I believe, like, some Vikings had that folklore as well. If I'm thinking right, I don't know. I could be wrong. Um, but yeah, but back to Karen. Karen actually, supposedly she stood up and saw somebody be a shapeshifter into like a reptilian. So, but yeah, I saw the video and that is she did. not what I heard at all. So there was a kid that was on the, I say kid, and he was like really just in his 20s. But anyway. Yeah, well, if you're my age, yeah, that's a damn kid. <laughs> So anyway, he was on the plane and he was like, you know, I seen her, I seen her ta sitting next to this guy on the plane. Okay. And like, you know, he had seen her talk to him or whatever. And she was like having a full blown conversation with him, but he wasn't saying anything back. Okay. And then out of nowhere, she started freaking out. Like I said, I'm just telling okay. you what I read. So Right. Well, he said that she started freaking out, and he was like, you know, what the heck, or whatever. He was like, we had just got on the plane. This lady was not drunk. <clears throat> he was like, I've seen a lot of people say, he was like, you know, it could have been possible that she could have drank before she got on the plane. But I've done it. She, I have to. I mean. <laughs> I would say, um. I've had a few. I've had a few I, drinks before I got on a plane. Um, yeah, I I just went to Virginia Beach last year, and I definitely had a few before I got on the plane. Um, yeah, I'd... yeah, I, I had a couple before I got on the plane. Um, yeah, I've done it. So, so anyway, um, and I love to fly, but I have to be really calm to get on the plane. <laughs> so I have to. Have I don't. I like. I love getting on planes. I actually love flights. I, I like flying. It's just yeah. I, I love I just, I love flights. You know, I get nervous initially getting onto the plane. Um, right. So I have to have something to kind of you know that liquid courage okay. to finally yeah, get on yeah. there. Yeah. Right. Anyway. Okay. So he said that she started freaking out, and I'll have to find his TikTok and I'll send it. I'll send you the video because he has okay. Two um, yeah. Send part. it. Like I said, I just saw what TMZ posted, so that's yeah, all so, I saw. That's TMZ. Whatever. Um, yeah. But I know that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm telling you, words. I still love that's TMZ, though. So that's why anyway, that's why I said what I said. So right. So she, he said that she's like she started freaking out, and um, she's like, you know, this guy is not real. You know, just you know, freaking out. So she's she was like, sitting. Not, she's like, I'm okay. Not so she was plane. sitting she's next like, to him. Yes, she was sitting next to this guy. Okay, the video I saw, which I. This guy was wear, look, this guy was wearing a hoodie. He said this guy was wearing okay. a hoodie next to him. He They were talking the whole time, but he wasn't talking. It was weird. I only saw what she was and screaming. Then, yeah, and then she started screaming and freaking out or whatever. And yeah, that's what I saw. She, le she left the plane. She was like, I'm not on this flight. I'm done. Like, I'm not doing this. Like, so she... She was freaked out. And then So she said, got up and... So she got off the flight. So she got off she the got plane. She got off the flight. So he then said that he turned around and he looked at this guy and the guy smiled at him and was like, you know, shrugged or whatever. And then <laughs> winked at him. And he, said he, didn't realize, and he said he didn't realize, but the way the guy winked, it was this way, not this way. Oh, no shit. Yeah. Okay. And he was like, he goes, I didn't really catch on to that, you know, because I was just like, you know, baffled about what the fuck just happened. So now so now you had somebody else claiming that his eyes blinked this way. This way instead of this way. So was but was she saying he was reptilian or something like that? Yeah no Did I get that part right? She didn't, she didn't say that. This kid said he saw he turned around and the guy winked and then shrugged his shoulders like, oh, well, or whatever. And he winked. But what did she see? That, but what did she see that freaked her out? I don't know. He didn't follow the lady off the plane and have the whole conversation with. I'm sure that that lady will eventually come out and tell her story. You think so? Yeah. Or she might. Be so you don't think the story's over? No. No, not at all. Like I said, I just read about it the other day, and that's why I was kind of like, okay, hang on. 
I'm not, and I didn't want to read too far into it because we know, like, again, TMZ, we know all about the internet on how people don't get shit right. People don't. People will take a story and blow it out of proportion. Always. So that's why I kind of wanted to talk about it. It's like, you know, is it... Because the video I saw, it was just a few seconds. It wasn't that long. I'll have so. to... Whenever we, whenever we wrap up and I go back inside, I'll find it. Um, okay. I'll send it to you. But yeah, I mean, she, she looked legitimately spooked. Yeah. But I can tell she wasn't drunk. I could tell she wasn't higher, you know. It, yeah, she it wasn't, didn't look like she was under the influence at all. You could no. see that she was tearing up and she was freaked out, dude. So yeah. she was like, that motherfucker is not real. Not real. <laughs> like, Jesus. Yeah. So, but what I read was, I, I could have sworn what I read was she was saying he was reptilian. Like a reptilian shapeshifter. Is what I read, and I'll maybe find that, it. I'll, maybe that I will find what whole blinking sideways. But I could have sworn what I read, and that's why I let's bring it up on the podcast because shapeshifters are a part of the paranormal realm. Because when people say, and I've said it on the podcast a thousand times, when people say the word paranormal, everybody thinks we talk about ghosts or refer to the word paranormal as ghost and. No. Paranormal does not have to do with just ghosts. So that's why the podcast is called Paranormal. There's so many Vantage other Point. conspiracies and everything else. Yeah, you know so I mean? you can talk about anything and it'd be paranormal, but it doesn't have to be about ghosts. No. So shapeshifters to me is a part of the paranormal realm. So that's why I thought, let's talk about this. This was just recent. It's perfect to talk about on the podcast. But yeah, I read that Something about she thought he was a reptilian shapeshifter, or something that, or that's what I thought. Yeah, look it up, see what you find. Like I said, I just saw it on TMZ <coughs> or TMZ's website, but I don't watch. I don't watch TMZ. I don't watch. Actually, I don't even watch TV hardly. Like I like I barely I might watch NASCAR with my dad, but, but that's about it. So she says, and I'm not censoring myself for any viewers. You don't, if you don't have YouTube might blast us for cursing, but I don't know. I don't give I a doubt shit. it. I doubt it. Um, she we're says not that po- we're not that popular, so I doubt it. Go says ahead. you can say whatever you want. The woman is heard saying, I'm telling you, I'm getting the fuck off, and there's a reason why I'm Yes, I saw that part. And That's what I... And everyone believe it, or they cannot believe it. I don't give two fucks. Right. I'm telling you right now, that motherfucker back there is not real. And you can sit on this plane and die with them, or not, I'm not going to. But, then, here's, but here's the thing, but what did she say? Well, she blasted that F word quite a bit in a matter of seconds. Yeah, she was freaking out. Damn, she dropped that F bomb really f- quite quite often. Yeah. Mm. Which, whatever, I don't care. I mean, it doesn't bother me a damn bit, but. But did she say it was sh- like reptilian, is what I'm asking? I don't know. I'm not seeing it. I don't know. I could have sworn the story I read, she said it was a reptilian shapeshifter. Says another TikTok user who says they were also on the plane. Another woman in question had been drinking prior to getting on the flight, elaborating on the headphones remark. This individual allegedly. Because I downloaded, there was somebody posted here. Hang on. 
okay, here it is. Somebody posted a meme, and that's why, that's how I found this out first. Because some, like somebody in the paranormal community, which I don't even know who it was, to be honest with you. So I mean, but that part don't matter. But somebody in the paranormal community posted this meme and told the story. So that's how I found out about it. So I googled it earlier. Woman freaks out on a plane before takeoff because something strange she saw. She demands to get off before warning others on board. I'm telling you right now, actually, okay, it's the same thing you just said. I'm telling you right now that motherfucker that, yeah, okay. Yeah, that was it. But then, but but when I was Googling it, I could have sworn it said that it was a reptilian shapeshifter. So I thought, okay, shapeshifter, paranormal podcast, let's talk about it. Yeah. Man. I'm going to have to look more into it, dude. Like, okay. Yeah, let's, like, let's do a little bit more research then on the next podcast we'll bring it up on what yeah. we find. For That's sure. why I wanted to talk about it, because I didn't know if you heard more than what I did. Mm-mm. I okay. didn't even know that Carrot Top was on board. I didn't hear Yeah, Carrot Top, Carrot Top was on the plane. I read when TMZ reported it on their website, Carrot Top was on, Carrot Top was on the plane, is what I read. And he said something in a manner she was freaking out over her earbuds first. Then stands up and says what she says. Yeah. So that's what made me watch the video, and no, she didn't yeah, look I'm drunk. Or, she didn't look drunk or high or nothing. She no, just she looked like. At all. That's why um, I said she. But I, I definitely go into try to find. So, it. I mean, she kind of like reacted like a, like a mom, like a <laughs> mom being at the like like a female being at the mall bitching over a pair of pants or something, you know. That's what it kind of reminded me of. Oh, you're retarded. Bud Kelly bitching about women again. So we have a lot of stuff coming up. Yeah, Um, we do. What do we got coming up? Well, Jason's going to be on next week. Jason will be on next week. And then we'll have Paranormal Day in August, which is coming up really fast, August 12th. Um, a lot Which, faster than that's did. okay to let everybody mm-hmm. know about Jason coming on. That's Jason's. Jason is the event coordinator for Paranormal Day Celebration. That's, that's his, his baby. baby. <laughs> and it's Jason's return to the podcast. Yeah. Jason's been on before. And I got to bitch that I never saw the owl. And this last year, I, got, I finally got to go see that damn owl. Oh, what was his name? Oh God! What is, is his it, name? Was it Toby? No, no, not- no. It's uh, what is that damn owl's name? He's so he's a cute, cute little. He's so sweet. Yes. Anyway, but no. I finally yeah. Last year, I finally got to go see the owl. Oh, I he's got so outside. Sweet. I love taking pictures with him. Yes. Um. But yeah, we have we have. That coming up August twelfth. But to let everybody know, Jason to be back on, back on the podcast. He's doing a return, and uh, we're going to talk about Paranormal Day celebration coming up. And um, so let we're going to let Jason um, kind of explain what it is, and I can tell you what it is, but I'm going to let Jason do it. That's going to be his Let's baby. Let him do that. Yeah. Um. But we have Jason's a great up. guy. Jason's a great guy to have on. I've known right. him for years. He's a he's a really good dude, man. Just a really good guy. He's okay. I'm just kidding. Oh <laughs> I'm just kidding. I love Jason. What an asshole! <laughs> he's okay. Uh, he's okay. He's, he's, he's all right. right. He's we, all right. We can sit at the same lunch table. I don't care. <laughs> I, you know, I'm going to clip this, and I'm going to put it on TikTok so he can know I'm tagging. <laughs> yeah, he's all right. I'll let him sit with me. I but... love Jason. I'm just kidding. I know. Um, but yeah, we need, well, to, we need to get back. We need to get back with uh, Sean Koss as well and figure out when he wants to reschedule. Uh, he, I emailed him back, and uh, when I told him that, 
oh, I told him about Jason's com- podcast coming up, but, but I told him, I was like, dude, man, get with me on when you want to do it. Um, We're just going to have to set a date and ask him if that's cool. Yeah. But no, yeah, you you can send, yeah, you can reach out to him. Yeah. Because you're the one that was telling me about him. Then yeah. I looked him up. I found him on Facebook. I, and Dude, he's his art. Get, getting him on the cool. podcast would be really cool because it's not, yeah. it won't be totally 100% paranormal related whatsoever. But It's not even paranormal related. It's just, you but, know, his, his pictures are very morbid and spooky and, you know, yeah. creepy. And well, I love, you know me, though. I got a, into him, but the main thing was, you know, the whole focus on right. the and stuff, you know. Well, not only that, but you know me, like being a photographer, it's like I love artists in general, you know. Right. And it's just I love something art. different, you know. I mean, it's yeah. something different. I think it'd be some, I mean, I think you would be a great person to interview. And, the, uh, by, and even with me going, I've went back and forth with him on emails. I, I did, like, sometimes I don't mind talking to people on phone, but, or whatever, but even talking with him, he seems like a really down to earth guy. You know, I mean, yeah. so, and he was actually wanting to come on the show. And then he was just kind of like, Hey man, um, something you know, came same, up, which I mean, it happens. Same reason why, you know, Jay had to reschedule and that's, it's, and that's totally we, fine. Life you know? happens. And I tell people, and that's why the, busy. everybody has their own stuff going on. It's fine. Of course. It's you summer. Know? You know, We're the thing about it is here every week. So it's okay. Exactly. And it's like, it's summertime. The thing about it is it's summertime, you know, when, well, I'm going to be, tra- oh, by the way, we're going to have to figure something out because I'm traveling to Seattle in a couple of weeks. I'm going to go see my kid. Mm-hmm. Haven't seen her since October. So um, I'm going to Seattle for a few days. Actually, well, I'm flying into Seattle, but I'm not staying in Seattle. Um, but we're we're going to have to do something with the podcast while I'm in Washington. Okay. Like, kind of like, okay, so Bud's reporting. Bud's now reporting from Washington. <laughs> what kind of... Do, 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 do. No. Yeah. <laughs> Breaking news. Bud's now in Washington. Good morning, Vietnam. <laughs> and he hasn't... They haven't shit... And the Washington people has not shipped his ass back to Indiana yet. Yeah, we will definitely. But no, well, because I'm taking well, I'm taking my laptop, and you know, I'm taking my laptop and stuff like that. So, but no, the one thing I did say, like, I have to go see Jimi Hendrix's grave and Bruce and Brandon Lee's grave. Yeah. So I'm definitely going to go see and. Oh, as a matter of fact, this is what we probably could do. That's in Washington? Uh-huh. Yeah, Bruce and Brandon is actually buried next to each other, and that's in Seattle. Will you, will you do me a favor? Sure. Will you go to Kurt Cobain's Define old favor? house? What? Will you go to Kurt Cobain's old house and take a picture of the memorial bench? I don't even know where it's at. I can look it up, though. I'm sure Sarah knows where it's at. I know you. Yeah, you're a big. I was. I was never a big fan of Nirvana. I'm a big fan of grunge. So now, okay, back. If you want to talk about grunge, Nirvana was one band I never got into, but um, I always got into Soundgarden, Mother uh, Love Bone. Oh, did you, you I, remember Mother uh, Love Bone? Yeah, but I uh, Soundgarden though. Chris Cornell was the prettiest man to ever live. <laughs> He really Mother was. to me, okay. Do you remember Mother Love Bone? Yes. They were, oh my god, that was one of the first bands out of Seattle that um, I loved. They, they all came out of Seattle, dude. They all just like flooded out Queens of Rack? Seattle. Huh? Do you remember Queens Rack? Queens Rack? Never heard of Queens Rack? They kind of hit the hair. They hit the hair metal era. Oh, uh, okay. They came out, was, they got a lot of radio on, play with a song called Silent Lucidity. I was big on Soundgarden and um, Alice in Chains were definitely. Oh, Alice in Chains was one of my favorites of all. Yeah, Still to this very day, the CD um, Facelift. That's my favorite! <laughs> That's got to be my favorite, one of my favorite CDs of all time. I still have the yeah. original CD. 
So me and Bo, we we were. I mean, that's when we first started dating. That's all we did was yeah. go to concerts. Mm-hmm. And I was actually surprised that he was so into like one of his. Fa- I mean, he was into like hair metal bands to grunge to rap to to yeah. every. You know, I mean, he he liked as much different genres. I mean, he was into all different kinds of genres. Right. Well, see, I graduated in 92, so we had all of to a lot of right. Alice. And we've seen them four times, but, of course, Lane has passed away. Yeah, Lane passed away years ago. Yeah. Dude, they didn't find his body for, like, seven days, dude. Yeah, he was already, like, um, decomposing. Yeah. yeah, when they found him, Lane was already decomposing on his couch. Yeah, he well he, um, rigor mortis was already setting in yeah. on him. So, oh, yeah. bad, bad. I could. I'm here. I'm hearing a damn June bug. I don't hear nothing. So, but yeah, I'll be in Seattle. Be flying into Seattle on the twenty first, and I'll be back the twenty third. But I, yeah, I don't get it. Yeah, I don't get to stay there very long, but yeah, I'm going out there to see my kid okay. and see her for a little bit. And uh, well, we'll fi- we'll figure something out. Um, yeah, we'll figure something out. We got yeah, we got still got to do something with the pot. Yeah, like I said, dude, like I I'll report. I think I'll there's report. one in my shirt, dude. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! There was one crawling in my shirt. <laughs> Since you're on a paranormal podcast, why didn't you just say it was a ghost? Oh. Come on. Oh god! Oh my god! It can't be that bad. Oh You're being god. dramatic. It was crawling on my boob. <laughs> oh, I heard it like you know, like that crap because they have like a hard shell. Yeah, you can hear it like when they move around and shit. Yeah. <sighs> I don't. But no. But yeah, I'll be in. But yeah, that's also. Oh, back to what I was trying to say earlier. Um, there's like some sort of like Japanese garden. In Seattle, and it's supposed to be haunted. But just yeah, there's like a Japanese flower garden or something like that. But it's supposed to be haunted. But it was well, owned by a Japanese. But it was owned by a Japanese family. And then now, I believe now the city of Seattle. If anybody from Washington is watching this or hearing us, which I really hope so. Drop out some haunted locations in the comments. No, if anybody knows anything about this place in Washington, feel free to leave a comment down below. Help with the algorithm and stuff like that. But, but yeah, those the yeah, I definitely have to go see Jimi Hendrix's grave. But yeah, if you want me, I don't even know where Kirk Cobain lived. You but I know they're from Seattle. Fine. I know they're from Seattle. So, but there was a lot of good bands that came out of Seattle. Did you ever get into the whole Do you think he really killed himself? Yes. I don't. I do. Okay. And I'll Here's... tell you and I'll tell you why. And I'll tell you why. Why? There was a guy that lived in a pointing there was a house just right over here, right behind us. I was getting me and my friends was getting off the bus in the seventh grade. And there was a guy that committed suicide over here with a shotgun. So it's not hard to do, because it, which it was a, I mean, it's, it was a horrible well, I'm not thing. Saying that it's, I'm not saying that that's hard to do, but when he injected with him, and I think it was like ten times the lethal dose. Of yeah, Canada. but here's the thing, and though. Then, but he, he probably had a high tolerance to it too, though. Dude, watch, watch, uh, watch. Um, Soaked in bleach. So, do you believe Courtney Love had something to do with it? Absolutely, I do. Why? Absolutely, I do. But what would she have to gain from that, though? Because he was wanting to get a divorce, and I mean, she would have been taken out of the will, and she wouldn't have been able to get nothing. But she, but hold on, though. But she still had her own money, though. Watch soaked in bleach. She didn't really have much. Who do you think the breadwinner was with that relationship? Whole really? Come on, whole. They were just as popular as what Nirvana was. Hole wasn't even that huge. I know, but I'm just saying they were just as popular as what Nirvana was. I thought. No. God, I thought so. 
No. Which, like I said, I didn't like Nirvana that much, though. She was not selling out places. No. She was not. No. In an odd way, and I hate, and don't, I hope nobody thinks I'm a hater, because this isn't nothing negative. But in an, I don't want to sound like an asshole when I say this. But it's almost like if the death of Kurt Cobain didn't happen, we wouldn't have the Foo Fighters. And I love Dave Grohl. I think Dave Grohl is one of the most is, amazing musicians. He is one of the most talented musicians. Songwriter, songwriter, oh, talent, the guy. Absolutely. So it's almost like if we didn't have the death of Kurt Cobain, we wouldn't have the Foo Fighters. And well, I love Foo you, Fighters. You, I, you I think it's a, they're an amazing band. Allison Chains, they split, they split up a lot because of Lane. And then Brian Starr got back. Uh, but hang on. on but hold on. But, but then, hold on. But listen, but I'm saying that Kurt was getting Kurt was getting really bad. And then Yeah, he then was bad. They were yeah. playing, I think they actually were talking about like quitting the band. And, I believe, yeah, cuz I saw an interview with Chris Novoselic and he and yeah, he said that band was about over. It, they were like done. Yeah. Well, but if you remember the unplugged, was, do you remember yeah. the unplugged concert, the MTV unplugged concert with mm-hmm. Allison Chains? Yeah, Lane was gone. He was, man. Lane was out of it. Yeah, I mean, he was, and even when I watched that, because it was live, and I was, I mean, it broke my heart to see that. It really did. And by I, the way, do you I remember? Never, I never got to see it like when it actually, like when it very first came out. But oh, I, I did. I, it was all. It was I, bad. But I've watched the concert. I've watched the concert. Okay, do you remember the bass player Mike Inez on his guitar that said friends don't let, let friends cut their hair? <laughs> do you know do you know what that was about? No. Okay, on his guitar, if you watch the unplugged on his guitar, he, on the bass, on his bass guitar, it says friends don't let friends cut their hair. Metallica came in, and this was when Metallica did the album Load and all of them cut their hair. So they came in to watch the show, and Mike went back to the back, wrote on that guitar so they could read it. Hmm. No bullshit. No bullshit. No bullshit. Ask anybody that knows me personally, like really, really personal. They'll tell you I'm full of useless information. You know, I like having friends like that, though. I can tell you shit, and you 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 will sit there and go, "How the hell do you even know that?" <laughs> like, how the hell? I like, I love hearing useless information. But I mean, I like I'm the type of person that like something will pop in my head, and I'm like, "Hold on, I gotta let me look it up," and I gotta look it up. Like, I have to know. Like, I need to know it. I don't know why I do it. Right. You know, it just, it's weird, and, you know, so, yeah, so that's me, though. I'm the guy with a ton of useless information that knows shit that nobody else thinks about. It's right. not that I know more than other people. It's not that. I'm not more intelligent. I'm not smarter. It's just, it's just random. It's just, I look up knowledge. shit that nobody thinks of. Right. Like, how, like, and, and I'll get a look like, man, you got issues. <laughs> Don't we all? Yeah, we all I know. Do. But I, I don't complain though. It's just, it's one of them things that I just do. You know, it's just. But it's like I was like when I was talking, I was talking to my mom and dad the other day, and we were somehow UFOs got brought up, which you know me in UFOs, right? Which, and um, we got talking about Roswell, and. And my mom was like, what? Like, yeah, I heard about it, but what? And I was like going over the dates. I was going over the the officer that they tried to embarrass. And like, I was naming names. I was naming dates. I was like, and they're looking at me like, can't believe you know all that shit. Like, you know, like really? Like, but yeah, I will. Yeah, I will sit and study something and, you know. That's why I think sometimes it's good to be a skeptic 
because when people talk about certain things in the paranormal world, I go the distance and research something and go, well, that no, that's not really true. You know, that's not what happened. You know, yeah. you know, you're reading bullshit, you know. You know, but again, that's me. Yeah, that's right. You keep being you, bud. That's right. I I don't I don't regret it. I don't. I don't think any of us would change you for the world. I think you're the only one that's ever told me that. <laughs> <laughs> I will cherish this moment as long as I live. Doesn't, doesn't mean I always have to agree with you. But I, like I will cherish you. this moment ever. <laughs> I just like that you're, you're set in your ways. You're set yeah. in your ways. So. And you know what, though? But I get it genetically. My grandmother. My grandmother was like that, but she was, like, horrible at it, though. Yeah. It's like, you got something stuck in her head. And, I, well, that's how I got my birth name. It was because of her. I mean, she was stuck in her ways, and I was not going to be named anything else but what I'm named with. <laughs> and, I mean... And they like it or not. That's exactly how it went down. Whether you liked it or not, it was going down. My grandfather did not have a prayer. That man did not have a chance whatsoever. <laughs> but no. All right. Okay, let's end the podcast tonight. It's and really uh, late. we went and to I, get up in the morning. <laughs> I don't. I'm sleeping in. Yeah. I gotta go to work. I gotta go to work, but um, I gotta probably go to work in early. So. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to go over for cleanup day for a couple hours and then I have to do a couple quizzes and stuff for school and Yeah. Then I'm cooking out steak on the grill tomorrow. Woo-hoo. You me teach you how to do it? Huh? You me teach you how to do I, it? No. I know how to do it. <laughs> well, I'm the barbecue guy. Yeah. I can teach you I, how to, I, I can teach you how to cook a steak. Down, I can throw down on the grill for sure. No, you, you want to have a cook off? You have your little smoker. You want to have a cook off one night? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, let's have a cook off one night. What? You I'll teach you. I'll teach you how to do it. You can't. You can't use the smoker though because you're just sitting and forgetting it. No. You got uh-uh. to do, do grill work. What? I'm. I owned. Well, I don't have one now, but. That's how I started. That's how I started smoking is because I started grilling first. Oh, grill. Then it turned into then it turned into me getting a smoker and all that. Hmm. No, I no, I'm awesome with the damn Weber grill. Okay. Oh hell well, no, I'm good. I'm we'll good have, with we'll a grill. Have a cook, we'll have a cook off one day. At yeah, the, and I'll teach you how to cook a steak. Don't worry, I'll teach you how. I it's know okay. how to cook a steak, bruh. <laughs> I can teach, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I can teach you how to do it. Okay. Can you do baked potatoes on a grill? I'll teach you. I'll teach you how to do that too. It's okay. Oh my god! I'm. <laughs> you love me, and you know it. <laughs> I, do. I do. All right. Well, hopefully everybody comes and checks us out next week. We'll have our friend Jason Snyder. Well, yeah, we'll have Jason next week. So everybody. Mm-hmm. Make sure you tune in next week. Um, it's either going to be Friday or Saturday, one of the two. I don't know yet. Um, he, I'll get, I'll get with him this week, so we'll figure it out. But it should be uploaded by like Sunday. It should. That's what I'm hoping on. Let's hope. <laughs> no big deal. So, no big but deal. no, but yeah, we'll get Jason on. Then we'll give. Sean another email or you can send you can send an email out to him and we'll get him up to date. Yep. So and stuff like that. But there's other people to, guys. Lots to look forward to. Most definitely. Yeah. But yeah, we, we got off get... topic quite a bit tonight and I thought yeah. so <laughs> So I just want to go ahead and make a shout out to the people that like what the hell are these two talking about? Cause we got talking about paranormal occasions. Seattle music, grilling, movies, barbecue, movies, 
Yeah, we got off topic a little bit once in a That's while. That's how, I mean, honestly, if you watch a lot of podcasts, like, they don't always stay on one topic. No, but you know what? That makes it interesting because that means we didn't plan it. Yeah. We didn't plan the conversation except for the Karen standing up on the plane. We planned that. That I tell you what, I have to. I have to find that. I'll. I'll find whenever we get off here and I go inside. I'll look. Yeah, it. let's keep looking. <clears throat> let's keep digging. And if anybody out there that's watching or listening to this podcast, and if you know more about this story, and again, like I said, I just read it for a few minutes, watched a video, and that's all I did. Yeah. But if anybody out there knows anything about this story more than what we talked about, shoot me a message. There's the links down below. All the contact inf- or contact send info or the link of an article or something in the comments. Yeah, feel free to comment down below. I don't care. It's all good. And if anybody, if there's anything we talked about and you want to leave a comment, feel free. I don't care. It's all good because we do this for entertainment. We do it for to have fun. Um, there's serious topics we talk about and stuff like that. And there's going to be um, podcasts that we're going. It's going to be serious topics, but. We love to have fun, and you know, and that's what it's all about. Let's have, you know, it's all about life. Have, you know, have fun with what you're doing. Be happy. Me and Bud have conversations like this outside of all the body. time, but we just don't. Yeah, we We're just very we, random and sporadic, and it is no structure to our conversations. We're just kind no, of no, so. not at all. And that's why, that's why I'm so glad you became a part of the podcast because it just it made it. To be honest with you, it made it a different dynamic. Yeah. You know, it gave me somebody, it gave it something to talk about, talk to, and throwing different ideas together. And it makes better conversations because the past podcast, like I didn't really talk a lot. You know, it was almost like me, well, no big deal. I mean, this is no whatever. But it was almost like me just asking questions and, like staying or listening, which is fine. But now it's almost like now we get now it gets better. Now it gets interesting. Now we got shit to talk about. You know that's what I love. You know, like even having Sabrina yeah. on, and me and Sabrina got to talk about what we used to do together with right. you know the National Paranormal Society and stuff like that. And then all three of us talking, all three of us, you know, that was really cool, and I loved it. I think it's going to be funny next week with Jason. We're all going to be clowning on the podcast. Just go ahead. Everybody next week when we get Jason on, it's going to be a fun podcast. I'm telling you right now, we're headed. We're going to talk about some cool stuff like the event. Don't get me wrong. But getting Jason on, man, he's such a cool guy that, you know, it's going to be fun. And um, so, yeah, be prepared on having a fun, listening to a fun podcast and, that's what I love about it. So, we're all a good time. Damn right. <laughs> all right, bud. And I wouldn't have it no other way. <laughs> no other way. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Okay, let's go ahead and wrap it up. And um, thank you for thank you everybody. And uh, we'll be on again next week. And uh, we'll see you guys soon. Toodles. All right. Have a good night. Later. You too.